Hello, this is Goku for the sum one, In- and I'm here to do a podcast. This is going to be my E3 podcast. I have some guests here, the amazing CJ, uh, CJB, and I have um. Oh, oh, Joe. <laughs> yeah, Madam Jeff. Yeah. Um, and so we're here now. We're going to talk about Nintendo exclusively here and now. Sorry, I already screwed up. But we're going to talk about Nintendo here. But if you're wondering why we're not talking about anything else E3 related, that's because we did that video over on CJB's uh, channel. So there will be a link below to both his channel and the video, so go check that out. But right now, Nintendo did amazing at this E3. Uh, before I let my my guests speak, because I don't like guests speak, um, they're here to listen to me. No, I'm joking. You'll be able to speak in a minute. Um, last year, Nintendo kind of didn't have the best press conference. Um, this year... They made it seem like they were even going to have a worse one. But then they came out, and they, 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 they gave us everything they promised, plus more. I think Nintendo blew it out of the water. They made this Zelda game basically on a high plateau. It could never live up to what they claimed it was going to be. And in my opinion, it surpassed it. So let's start with, obviously, let's start with Zelda. Um, what do you guys think about the new Zelda game? I hear one of us here has played the game. Yeah, yeah. That, that's me. I actually got the chance to play the game during a Zelda experience event in Nintendo's New York store. Is that anywhere near Times Square? Um, if Rockefeller Center is close to Times Square, yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I, I don't know where that is off the top of my head. I was just wondering, because I'm guessing... I'm guessing it would be near Times Square because the Nintendo store, they have money. Yeah. Is that anywhere near the Pokemon Center, or is that the Pokemon Center? Yeah, in the past, it used to be the Pokemon store until they eventually changed it to just be the Nintendo store. Okay. Okay. Well, let's get into it. So, obviously, I can give my thoughts. Chris can give his thoughts. But tell me what... As a person that actually played it, tell me your opinion. Like, what did you experience about the game? Well, if I can give it in a nutshell, if you played any Elder Scrolls slash Witcher game, it feels like it, but then when it, but then when you go into combat, it feels like a regular 3D Zelda game where you strive from the left, the right, backflip, and, you know, do your attacks. The only addition I can think of from the combat when playing the demos is Flurry Rush. It's the Flurry Rush mode. Or basically, if you do a perfect dodge against the enemy, you do like this bullet time effect where you slow down the enemy and you do multiple strikes on them. I heard something, and tell me if you if you experienced this at all, like if you heard about this at all. Um, I heard they were not letting anybody go into two of the um, of the shrines. Is that true? Yes, th- um, I had like two or three Nintendo Store employees like on me, and there were in a lot of people on behind their backs doing the demos. Like, oh no, no, don't go there. Just go into like this area of the Great Plateau. And I was like, okay, fine, and that's it. So were there people trying to go outside of the Great Plateau? Uh, yeah. <laughs> there was one dude who was really anxious, and they were like, no, 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 sir. Just, just explore this area of the Great Plateau. <laughs> because I, because I had heard that somebody, um, that that basically, well, that basically, if you go into two shrines, like if you beat one shrine and then go into another shrine, they boot you off. I heard that that happened. I never heard e- that, to be honest. Yeah, I heard that at E3. That like they basically, um, I don't know what it was about, but um, but I'm guessing it was story related. But yeah, now what are your thoughts? Chris on Zelda. Visually, it looks beautiful. It looks. It reminds me of Wind Waker as well with the graphics as well. So. Why? Well, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely get that. I absolutely get that. Um, there, so there are a lot of there are some Wind Waker stuff in here. Like there are these little creatures you'll find. Did you find one of the little creatures, like the leaf creatures? Uh, no. In my playthrough and the two demos, no. But I did see one person. Um, play through the demo, and they encounter one of the plant creatures from Wind Waker. Okay. That's the thing about it is, is that I'm sure you saw this. I'm sure you watched other people play, right? Yeah. That nobody did the same uh, the same thing. Like, it's 
so open world that everyone's going to play it differently. Yeah, different experiences like a Western RPG, Elder Scrolls, or Witcher game. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm really excited for it. I think what it uh, I think I I I am I'm I'm excited. Like I'm really excited for that game. That's like to me that was the game of E3. Yeah, and a lot of people's E3s. If you go into um, what was the most talked about game of E3, and most of the you know top like top game is like The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. And for some reason, one chart I saw of Battlefield 1 and FIFA 17 being the top games talked about in Twitter. Oh, God. I mean, I can, I can understand FIFA 17 for, like, Europeans, but, like, I saw FIFA 17, oh, so like, in the third spot for the most on Twitter. Oh, sorry. So you're stereotyping um, um, CJB's people, right? Oh, shit. I forgot. Um, CJB's, uh, I... like... It's cool, man. Joking. I'm joking. That was a joke. I... <laughs> He's joking. <laughs> no yeah, because that's all. Because to be honest, that's all people from Europe play is uh, FIFA. Am I right, CJB? Uh, I haven't played FIFA since, since like FIFA 11. That's like six years ago. Hey. <laughs> but completely. Yeah, um, but no, did you uh, just to, just to get off FIFA for a second because we're holy Nintendo in this video? But um, I made a meme, um, and tell me if you if you think this is funny. I shared it with uh, CJB. I didn't actually make like a picture of it, but I said somebody should make this meme. Um, and if you're listening to this video and you actually want to make this, go ahead. I give you rights. Don't have to credit me. Um, just send me a link to it so I can share it. Um, and definitely put your name somewhere in it so you can get the credit for it. I don't care. I don't care. Memes are memes. I don't need... If, if a meme goes crazy, I don't need to take credit for it. But the meme is... And somebody probably already thought of this, okay? Mm. Um, FIFA um, 2017 has a story mode. Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> no story mode. <laughs> Yeah, I mentioned that what? in one of my other in the one other podcast. Yeah, um, but no. Now we can get back to Zelda in a minute, but let's talk about the other offerings Nintendo had because we thought they were gonna have nothing else. Yeah, and um, there's some meaty stuff here. Any of you, either one of you, Pokemon fans? Yeah, I play it. Yeah, but. I was more of a more of a Pokemon fan growing up, collecting the Pokemon cards and collecting them back in the day, like the advanced news and so. Last game I played was Pokemon Crystal. That was a long time ago, so. Yikes. Yeah, that extremely long time ago. Um, but um, that was second generation, the third game, the second generation. Um, but this this game looks really good. Um, it was. We had saw a video right before E3. That's why I didn't think we were going to get anything at E3. And we got some meaty stuff. Like, we didn't get anything huge. Well, we did get some information. But we found out that um, that Solia is, um, or whatever his name is. I forgot his name. Um, the lion legendary in the game um, is uh, Psychic steel and that was kind of interesting because i because everyone thought he was going to be fired yeah and he, um and th there's actually a reason for why he is the way he is i'm not going to get into it it's a very long it's a very long thing but that's just alchemy but uh but but i i do think what they showed was cool i love the aloha region i think it's a really cool region um i am i am uh i'm Lit, uh, is it Litley? Litley? I think it's Litley. Yeah, the cat Litton or something, or Litley. Yeah, yeah, yeah Litton. Um, I'm Litton, I'm Team Litton all day long, every day. Uh, I'm gonna get Sun, and I'm gonna get Litton. Those are my two. Um, absolutely gonna do that. Um... Are you gonna talk about Pokemon Go? Or anything like that? <laughs> I'm gonna talk about Pokemon Go in a minute, but I wanna get, uh, I wanna get a few more things. We did see some of the starter Pokemon, nothing gigantic there. But it was, uh, but but it was cool. 
Um, and when I say starter Pokemon, I mean, like, the Pokemon you get in the very beginning of the game, like your Rattatats and your Pidgeys. Uh, we saw those Pokemon. We got three new Pokemon. Um, and we do know that they are going to have multiple evolutions. I believe, um... I believe the bird Pokemon, uh, the Woodpecker, I forgot its name, uh, that's going to have two stages. They, they all but confirmed that. So that's cool. Yeah. And I think a Woodpecker is kind of cool. Um, but nothing spectacular there. Uh, we didn't get to see any of the evolutions of the starters. That was a little disappointing. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, so Pokemon was there. We did get a little bit, and I was excited. Um, so, CJB, you want to talk a little bit about Pokemon Go? If you want to, yeah. Did they say, did they say anything in the conference or anything like that? Yeah, they had a whole, like, 30-minute thing about it. And I watched part of it, but I kind of tuned out on it. Um, because for me, it, it, it just doesn't interest me. Yeah. I'm more mainstream Pokemon. I don't get into all these side things. I might try it out if I can try it for free, but I'm not going to pay for this. Mm. But yeah, but they did talk about Pokemon Go. Let's talk about day two for a minute here, okay? Did either one of you see day two? No, I didn't uh, watch the, the day two of the live stream. Yeah, of Nintendo. Um, I don't think so because it was the um, what was the one of the days that I went to the New York store to wait in line. And to actually play the Zelda demo, so I don't think I've seen too much of the live stream. Joe, okay. Joe, how long was you waiting for in line? Um, yeah, this is a funny story. I had to wait in line last week in order to get a ticket, in order to be able to wait in line to play the Zelda demo, which was like an hour or less. I waited like, um, what was it, from 6 a.m. to 10 or 11 a.m. to get my ticket. And then I waited around maybe two or three hours. Like, I was the first person online um, for the New York store. And then I was the first person to be able to play the demo along with, like, four or five other people. Yeah. That's yeah, I was cool. this dedicated because I had nothing better to do. And, you know, I actually am excited for the new Zelda game. Yeah. Uh, but we'll get back to that in a minute. We definitely can talk about that for a little while longer. Yeah. But day two um, had a couple of things. They had a new IP, um, Ever Oasis, I think it's called. Yeah, Ever Oasis. Which looks interesting. Uh, go look up the trailer. Go look up the video. Uh, I'm not going to say much about it here, but it's a new IP, so they did do that. Um, it's made by the guy. It made, it's made by one of the people who worked on Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, and 11. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken. Um, so he has a big history with with uh, making RPGs, and this is going to be an RPG. So that's all cool. Um, we got to see some more Paper Mario uh, Color Splash. Um, not excited for that game at all. Yeah, me too. I'm not that excited. Um, we got to see Tokyo Mirage Sessions, which is a game I'm really excited for. I'm um, not going to buy it day one, I'll be honest, but I am excited for it. It's uh, If you're not aware of it, it's Fire Emblem uh, mixed with uh, Shin Megenzi Tensei. Um, and it's like this pop singing RPG. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing it justice, but the game looks gorgeous. Um, the characters look awesome. Uh, it's going to be a really fun RPG, and it's basically like it's basically like if you took if you took like a Tokyo um, pop thing and you made that a video game where like you go where your dungeons are like are like places in Tokyo and like they're very music stylized. That's the game. It's really cool. It's it, it's Japanese, of course. Like that is so Japanese to do that. But but that game was like really really cool. Um. And they had a couple other things. Monster Hunter. But obviously, but obviously, their meat was in day one. So if you want to talk a little bit about Zelda, a little bit more, we can talk about that, or we can end it here. What does everyone want to do? I uh, first man, it's up to you guys if you want to carry on or not. 
Wait, you said you're gonna end it, Chris, or no? No, no, no. Would you like to talk about Zelda more? Yes or no? Oh yeah, before? sure. I can talk okay. more about Zelda. Well, I don't mind. Okay, I'm just saying we're we're getting close to the end of, of of this video, so just let's talk a little bit more about Zelda. Let's go where it is. Um, yeah, it's a truly open world game. Did you guys hear that? Uh, did you guys hear that you can literally go to the final boss yeah. from the beginning of the game? Yeah, they were, they emphasized that um, during the demonstration in the New York store, and everybody was like, "Whoa, holy crap! You can actually do that!" And the and the guy in the voice mic is like, "Yes." You can actually fight Ganon in your underwear. <laughs> Whoa. I swear to God, during the... Um, when the did he game... say you can fight Ganon in your underwear, or did he say you can fight the final boss in your underwear? Well, I remember, or at least some would remember, that um, the voice in Link's head, either Zelda or some goddess, said that Ganon was around some kind of castle, I think the Hyrule Castle, and said you can just go there immediately and fight him. Or just do some story missions okay. to... I don't remember them confirming Ganon. They might have where you were. I don't remember hearing them confirm Ganon. But I think Ganon is in the game. I just didn't remember any confirmation of Ganon. So where does it fit in the timeline then? Is it... Where is oh, it in the time? My guess is... My guess is it's either going to be before or after Wind Waker. But like... But like... I don't know how that makes sense. Uh -huh. But yet again, we don't have the game, so speculating where this fits in the timeline is, like, basically speculating... It's... Yeah, like, it's... It's basically speculating where you're gonna put the furniture in your new bedroom, even though you haven't found your new house. Yeah, that kind of makes sense of the comparison. Yeah, it's like... You could start laying out your room, but you don't know the size, you don't know the dimension, you don't know where the door is going to be, where the windows are. So you're going to make mistakes. So we can speculate, we can come up with ideas. Um, there are some things to Wind Waker. Um, this seems like a very, this seems like a very, um, a very non-populated Hyrule. Now, they did say there are villages, there are things like that, but we didn't see that. Um, I've heard rumors that they did say that there was a village in the plateau, but they took it out for the demo. Do you know if that's true, or did you hear anything? I never heard about that, to be quite frank. Okay. But there are going to be villages beyond the plateau. So that stuff will exist. I but we might anything. not... But, uh, I so it's... Uh, what were you going to say? I heard there's going to be, like, over 100 shrines. Is that true? Yeah, there are a hundred yeah. shrines. The demonstrator did talk about that. Like, there's a lot of content for you people who are completionists, like Gerard, to actually do it if you can. And then obviously there's speed running for the speed runners. Like, you can immediately go to uh, Ganon or the final boss, whoever that is, which yeah. really interests me because in speed running, it's all about getting the essential things that you need. To beat the game. It's about skipping stuff that's not essential, okay? Yeah. And it's going to be really interesting to see what you need to get to beat Ganon. Yeah. What if it, what if it's before, like, Skyward Sword? Like the first Link? I don't think so. Nah. If, if the full game is like the demos of what I saw in the live stream and what I played, it's just going to give you the simple bases like, oh... Here's running, here's jumping. Just know how to use the mechanics of picking shit up from the field and attacking enemies. Oh, no, there's going to be a story to the game. They just didn't want to tell you the story. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's going to be a story in this game. Don't worry. That, that's going to be a thing. Yeah, they emphasize that in the demonstration. Like, oh, you can play, like, you say, if it's a Western RPG, or if you want to play, like, a Zelda game, you just follow, like, the map in your tablet and go to the, and go to the map for a story objective. Yeah. Yep, but we could talk longer, but uh, but I think we've exhausted uh, this topic. Like we can talk about, I could talk about Zelda for hours, but there's a lot more of E3, and I don't want to be here all night. So if we talk, if we <laughs> talk for twelve hours about Zelda, then obviously CJB is going to want to talk about that plus longer on Square Enix alone. So we're going to cut this now. Um, so this was Goku Photo Some One. 
the amazing CJ Boo. Battlefield Joe 97. Yep. And we'll see you next time. Related links will be below. And hopefully we'll see you shortly. Peace.